Why is a snog from Superman entirely forgettable? How are Superman and Batman back in black? Which New Zealand Governor General who shares his birthday with Superman died at the age of 18? And what's the link between Batman and Julius Caesar? Did they go to uni together like we did? Yeah. Ooh. Cool. Good fact. Good fact. Glad <laughs> we could clear that up so early. That's <laughs> mine out of the way. To everything you didn't need to know about today, we are talking everything you didn't need to know about Batman versus Superman. I, for one, think Superman is much better than Batman. Who's with me? Yes, I'm with you. Tom, my friend. Well, Tom and I will be talking truths, while Kenny <laughs> and Jen will be lying to you throughout the episodes. As always, we'll be giving you our favorite facts that we found out this week, and at the end of the episode, we will vote for whoever's fact is our favorite. That person will win, and they will win... The fight. They will win. Who is better, Batman or Superman? It's going to happen today. <laughs> so in response to your conjecture there, Sam, I was just thinking that, okay, for a start, you think Batman is going to be more realistic. But then you go, actually, when people have a lot of money, they don't become super great people. <laughs> they go quite the opposite way. Yeah. <laughs> so actually, Batman, Superman is more realistic. Batman spends his fortune beating up homeless people who have been kicked out of an asylum rather than getting them help, which to me okay. sounds very on brand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I could imagine so what, Elon Musk doing that. Yeah. Yeah, what, what, yeah. We've actually, what we've actually learned is that not only do you need to be rich, but you also need to have a very long history of trauma uh, to be... Because <laughs> to, to be fair, uh, and I'm a, a massive geek, um, to be fair, Bruce Wayne as Batman, uh, which is the whole thing, is that Batman doesn't see himself as Bruce Wayne. He is Batman playing Bruce Wayne. Whoa. Which is... Yeah, yeah. So there's a whole episode, there's a whole thing with, um, like, um, they meet up with Wonder Woman and she's got the, the lasso of truth. And she's like, in order to do, for this to be like a trust circle, we're going to say our names. And so, so everyone holds on to this thing and she's like, um, you know, Diana, I can't remember her last name. And it's like, Diana Kal-El, Prince. Di- Diana Prince. And then it's like, Kal El, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like, shut up, Val Kuma. Is this the same Frank Miller episode as, um, I'm the goddamn Batman? The goddamn Batman. It feels very much the same character arc. I was once playing a game of, it's not charades because you're allowed to talk, but you're allowed to say one word and you had to guess what the other person was acting. And the guy was that was doing it with me, he just went, <laughs> I'm. I was like, Batman, it was great. <laughs> here's, a, here's a question for you guys. Do you guys know why Batman wears his symbol on his chest? <gasps> Tom! Is it because if he wore it on his butt, people would objectify him? That would be hilarious. <laughs> they call him Buttman. <laughs> <laughs> The reason, the reason why is that he actually, that part there is a cannon heavily armoured. It's way more heavily armoured. So like everyone keeps shooting that part of him as opposed to like his face. <laughs> so he's trying to draw the fire to the symbol. Yeah. It's funny. I, I love that um, at the moment now where we all wear masks, Batman has the complete reverse of that. Like <laughs> we wear that and he's got this going on. Do you think he find it really hard to wear a mask because like I imagine the bat cowl has like lenses and the eyes and stuff. Do you think they'd just immediately fog up if he had to put like a medical yeah. mask on? It's like <gasps> I've got a, it's like I've got a goddamn exemption. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where did I put my phone? I need forgot to scan in. Oh yeah, imagine being Batman and they're like, "Can we just check your vaccine pass?" And he splashes it and it comes up Bruce Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> So, I don't, Jen, it, it would come up as Batman. What would happen is Bruce Wayne would go to a restaurant, hold up his thing, and yeah. it'd be Batman. <laughs> this is your, your Batman, Mr. Wayne. He's like, damn it! I love, that, I love the implication that he somehow got an NHI number for Batman. <laughs> <laughs> he does get shot a lot. <laughs> if anything, you could make a call for being the index case, right? Where did this all start? It was Batman. <laughs> Somebody True. ate Batman. <laughs> You've got a zoonotic jump from bats to humans. Who are we going to look at first? Who is the, the Batman? Most- <laughs> yeah. Who had sex with Batman? Batman. <laughs> Catwoman. There is there there is an there is like a comic where like they literally depict Batman and Catwoman having sex, but like pants down, like they keep all the rest of their costume on. You say yeah. comic? Is this in some dark corner of the? <laughs> Deviant Heart is not canon. Tom. On the Dark Knight web. Hey. Uh, the Dark Knight Rises. Oh no! No, I don't like it. How many how many psychics has Batman gone through? He's gone through quite a few. Sounds like a thousand, right? 
I'm, I know the Joker beat one to death, and that was like a real bad. It was a real bad moment in the Batman series <laughs> <laughs> when when the Joker beat one of them to death. Um, There's also and, that and, bit where Robin was so traumatized by his experience with Batman, uh, noting that he joined Batman after witnessing his parents' murder. Um, but he was so traumatized by his time with Batman that he had to change his name again and become Nightwing. So you can only imagine someone who witnesses their parents being killed when they're 12 and then becomes so much more traumatized they have to change their name again. Oranga Tamaraki is going to have some questions for him before they place another 12-year-old orphan in his care. If you're going into a witness protection program and you're trying to hide from Batman, would you go for something like Sam Smith or would you go for Nightwing? Like, what what is more likely to... (laughs) I'd go Superman. (laughs) And that's our Batman versus Superman. Batman (laughs) Do we all know which one came first? That, it was Batman. Batman that, came first. Batman came first, 1937, in Detective Comics. And Superman came a year later, 1938, in um, Adventure Comics, or Action Comics. And so they are AC. Very good. Yeah. What I love about it as well is that Detective Comics gave, like Detective Comics with Batman, and it gave DC their name, but they call themselves DC Comics. But... DC stands Detective for Comics, Detective Comics. Comics. Do we know how many times Batman, like Batman and Superman, have actually fought each other? I think it's four. Sixteen. Oh. Is this including mm. all of the extended universes and the? I think there's a couple of those. Yeah. Yeah. But um, sure. Superman wins a lot more than I thought. I would expect Superman to win then. every time because he's mm-hmm. literally an alien with supernatural powers. Yeah. Mm. And Batman has a lot of cool shaped batarangs. Yeah. <laughs> Batman is a really good symbol for like if you're a rich millionaire and then Superman is a really good symbol for literally everyone else cuz he's come <laughs> down and he's using his powers for good. He's an immigrant. Mm. He's an you immigrant. We got to support the immigrant. There's he's also an alien. a school of thought that he's an allegory for Moses. <laughs> oh, what's that? In Hebrew, um, his real name, Kalel, can be translated, um, it kind of sounds like the Hebrew for voice of God, which is what they call prophets. And in the Moses story, his parents put him into a basket to save him from, from certain death and send him off down a river to parts unknown. And he gets adopted by a nice family and raised up. Superman uh-huh. gets put into a pod um, during the destruction of his home planet, Krypton. His parents send him off into the universe. He gets adopted by a nice family. He's found in a cornfield, which is kind of like the bulrushes that Moses mm. has found amongst. Yeah. And he becomes like a speaker of goodness and truth. Yeah, and he brings oh, yeah. a bunch of plagues to Egypt. <laughs> yeah. That was a great comic. I enjoyed that one. Um, and Jim Caviezel uh, played him in a movie. <laughs> Um, I love you know the S you know you you know way that's supposed to be the the Kryptonian symbol for for hope but he I don't know like how he actually knows that like for all he knows for all he knows that's the symbol for baby. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's just the size of the baby grow he was wearing. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, the yeah, size. Yeah. That's right. That's that's why he wears skin so tight. He's just going there. Yeah, yeah. He, um, yeah, it's, it's, supposed, it's actually supposed to be for an eight-year-old child, and he's just wearing it like smooshed <laughs> across his boobs. Everyone's back in Krypton being like, oh my god, did you see Kal-El? He's still wearing that. Ugh. Awkward. Uh, it's not so that everyone shoots the baby there, right? <laughs> 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 no, but speaking of yeah. um, chest adornments, um, so my fact was about what Batman has in common with Julius Caesar, um, and the answer is actually to do with the chestal region. And it's that both of them have armor with nipples on. <laughs> oh. oh, amazing. Famously, in the Joel Schumacher movies, which was Val Kilmer and George Clooney, the bat suits had nipples. Yeah. And George Clooney was interviewed about this and he was like, I don't know. I guess Batman's cold a lot. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> don't think about it too hard. It's a comic book movie. He's basically. always keeping two raisins with him at all times in case he gets hungry. <laughs> Those are the bat snacks. Um, (laughs) And Joel Schumacher was interviewed about this and basically said that the costume designer took inspiration from um, ancient Greek and Roman statues where commanders are often portrayed with full armour and little pointy perky nipples. And smaller penises, isn't that the thing? Well... Yeah, teeny tiny. Typically, penises. leaders wouldn't be portrayed with penises. If you were portrayed with, your, like, they're not Donald ducking it. They don't have the armor on top and they're just free falling out. The <laughs> um, mythological heroes would be portrayed naked, but generals would often be portrayed you know, ah. in their clothes because they were real people who you could see in the agora and be like, "Hey, I've seen your willy over there." Um, Ah, Patro- Patroclus, I see you've gone Donald Ducking today. <laughs> Speaking of Donald Ducking, I'm doing it right now. 
<laughs> the beauties of Zoom. We'll, we'll never know, uh, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I was thinking bats actually do have two nipples, right, Tom? But they're between their legs normally. Those, those are they're further down. <laughs> no, they're further down because when you're hanging upside down and you've got a baby, you um, want to have them long. So, oh. uh, so they're in the wrong place. Well, but it's funny because there is a there is a Batman villain called Man Bat, who is a yes. what? Man Bat. Yeah, the, the villains are hilarious. There's um. Super is the man be a pig? The oh, villain, man, the, man. Batman is like, you know, I have the power of super cold. I can control, you know, the plants. I'm just a crazy guy. <laughs> <laughs> I tell, I make riddles. I love the versions, like superheroes always have like a, like a villain or an adversary who is basically them just like these bizarro yeah, yeah. Superman and man bat, apparently. Batman has one villain um, called Calendar Man who, um, all of his crimes are like based around days of the year. Did did, did he have a calendar girl what? sidekick? Because that's often pretty hot. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what? Called There's a villain calendar man. called Calendar Man. That feels that is... like Calendar Man was being admitted to Arkham, and they were like, "Okay, name, yep, super villain name." And he's like, "Super, uh, super um, uh, calendar, calendar Man." Is Window Man taken already? <laughs> Door like Man, no way. <laughs> They also have polka dot men. Because Superman just eschewed object man and went with Mixospitalic, which is also I, fun. It's also a good one. I love yeah. the idea that polka dot man is just a guy who's got measles and is just covering up. <laughs> just He's an anti vaxxer. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, calendar man sounds like my kind of guy because I love dates and birthdays <laughs> and days that when people share birthdays. That's my probably my favorite thing. And I found out that Superman's birthday is. February the 29th. He was born on a leap day. Maybe. Yeah, which means he shares his birthday with New Zealand composer Gareth Farr, who I once sang karaoke with a, in a, at a karaoke bar in Wellington, and he said, I had an impeccable Fred Schneider. We were singing Love Shack. Uh, uh, also, <laughs> it would have been weird with... if you were doing My Heart Will Go On. <laughs> you were Donald ducking it at the time. I was Donald ducking it at the time, I'll be honest. Um, rap, rapper Ja Rule was born on a leap day as well. So was New Zealand tennis player Claudia Williams, and so was the 14th Governor General of New Zealand, David Beatty, who was born in 1924 and died in 2001 at the ripe old age of 18. <laughs> so that implies that I see what Krypton, you did there. <laughs> Krypton uh, is the planet that Superman is from, right? Krypton is, um, yes. Yeah. Superman is from has, Krypton. He was born in a, in a city called Kryptonopolis. As the Gregorian calendar, not the Julian calendar, as uh, Jen might intimate, but the <laughs> the one with the extra bit. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. I also love that that you got two superheroes. Um, speaking of Krypton, like one of who's you know in invincible, completely indestructible. His only weakness is like obscure rocks that have apparently are everywhere, but from his own planet. And the other guy's weakness is probably just a really nasty nasty virus <laughs> yeah, yeah or just like mm. knives or getting shot or like yeah, yeah. just tripping down the stairs. getting shot anywhere that's not boobs region <laughs> bringing up memories of his parents is probably something <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh, oh, oh the story of um kryptonite um which is you know superman's only do you guys know about like the other kryptonites Oh, there's red so, kryptonite and yellow kryptonite and periwinkle kryptonite, clear kryptonite. There's also Peri in one of does periwinkle kryptonite just make them obsessed with interior design? Uh no. Wait, oh. wait, Jen, because there is one that probably does based on this. Um, so in one episode, one comic, which is like a spin weird spin-off, so it's not considered it's not considered canon. Um, <laughs> there is the pink kryptonite, which makes Superman gay. Um, and not just gay, effeminately gay. Oh, uh, like camp. It's not, 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 su not super gay. Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he switches over, and so he's no longer into Lois Lane. He's into Jimmy Olsen, and mm -hmm. like, yeah, does think about interior design. <laughs> Again, is this in one of your special videos? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it, it's been around for nearly a hundred years. There's going to be some absolutely bonkers yeah. uh, comments out there. Yeah. Um, yeah. What, what I also love is like, there's the there's the verses, and so there's like Superman versus Batman, but there's also like Batman versus Alien. Batman versus Predator, Batman versus Alien and Predator, Superman and Batman versus Alien and Predator. <laughs> Superman versus Batman versus Kramer versus Kramer. Mm. Oh. Well, Superman mm. has fought some amazing people. He uh, he fought Hitler, and in one episode, he brought down the KKK in real life. 
Okay, what? There, there was a man who infiltrated the KKK, found out all these secrets, and gave it to the guys at DC Comics. They made an episode where Superman did that, took down the KKK, revealed all these secrets, their legitimate like passwords and stuff they use, put it out in the world. That comic led to fewer people signing up to be in the KKK in real life. So Superman like just defeats racism and stuff, while Batman is busy fighting the mentally ill. I think Superman's better the, than Batman. There's a cartoon from the 1950s. It's just like a little um, one-shot panel that apparently used to be distributed to schools, but I think also was included in the back of some of the comics, um, where he's telling school children not to be racist. Oh, uh, yeah, so, I think I've seen this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he says, what, what's if, you America, hear anybody yeah. Talk, if you hear anybody talk against a schoolmate or anyone else because of his religion, race, or national origin, don't wait. Tell him that that kind of talk is un-American. Oh, great. But, <laughs> yeah, that's un-American, like... Yeah. This is how we do things yeah. in America. This is, you do things bad, like us it? while you're here. <laughs> if you come here, you have to be like us because that's also, what Americans do. This was in the 1950s, so possibly yeah. just prefiguring McCarthyism. But <laughs> um, a little bit stepping out, but um, you, the guy who had been to like Captain America, Jack Kirby, um, there's a whole story of uh, three Nazis getting really upset because he was like, you know, hated Nazis. And so they go, so he gets a phone call guy. Yeah, he gets a phone call, uh, and they're like, there's three of us in the lobby, and we're going to take you down. And he goes down and beats the shit out of them. <laughs> <laughs> so all superpower, superheroes seem to have some weird superpowers, and there are some in the comics that sometimes they appear and then they disappear very quickly. Most of those are non-canon, like Tom's already intimated, but some of them make it into like movies, like major movies, like Superman 2, where Superman kisses Lois Lane, and then she instantly forgets everything that's happened. Yeah. And <laughs> it's you know, forgettable. <laughs> Good word, yeah. Blake ah, Kitty. And the, it's not the only like thing that they've brought up. So uh, there's been episodes where Superman all of a sudden can rearrange his face and look like anyone, but <laughs> that just gets forgotten and never brought up again. Isn't can it canon in some some versions that he can elongate his spine? So as Clark mm-hmm. Kent, he's literally like three or four inches shorter than Superman. I know in the comics, he um, the glasses that Clark Kent wears um, changes his eye color, so that's um, that's why that's, that's a reason why people don't don't think they're the same person. Like if you're looking at someone, mm. like they look exactly the same, but they have different colored eyes. It must be different people. Yeah, like that's not what I would go for no, in no, terms no. of identification. Jen, Superman doesn't wear glasses. Clark Kent does wear glasses. Oh my god, I've been completely confusing them this whole time. That's so awkward. I totally thought they were yeah. the same person. Oh my Superman. god, Sam, can you edit around that? That'd be great. Yeah. Uh, we'll just get Superman to kiss you. It'll be fine. <laughs> the reason they use that is because they um they wanted to like erase it by sending him back through time again by making him fly around the world to go back in time because that that works. Like when we travel to London. Yeah. That that erases time. And when it came to the second movie, they were like, "Can we do the same thing again?" Oh, I know. Let's just give him uh, a Bill Cosby kiss to make him forget. Okay, here's a question for everyone. Favorite mm-hmm. Superman actor? I'm going to say Henry Cavill. Even though the movies weren't that, weren't as good, Henry Cavill is an amazing. Is like the he is Superman. Subsidiary like, question: Is George Reeve and Christopher Reeve are they related? Is that's racist, related? Kenny. Dad? Just because people have the same wrong. surname doesn't mean they're related. <laughs> that's a genuine <laughs> question. I don't know the answer. No, I don't think. Um, I, th- I don't think they are. <laughs> But yeah. I thought I stand by saying that was a racist question. Yeah. My favorite Superman is Nicolas Cage. Oh, God, yes. So do you guys know that Tim Burton, uh, he was brought on to direct um, a Superman movie that Kevin Smith had written. Kevin Smith must be related to me because we've got the same surname, not how it works, Kenny. So, yes, yeah, so, um, so Kevin Smith had written this Superman movie. He's a massive Superman fan. fan. Tim Burton was brought on um, to direct it, immediately started playing with it, fired Kevin Smith, which leads to now when Kevin Smith um, is asked to sign autographs for things, he writes, fuck Tim Burton on it, which is pretty <laughs> funny. And then, um, and Tim Burton was like, yeah, I'm going to make a Superman movie. And my guy is Nicolas Cage. And they um, they fitted him for costumes. They went as far as designing it all. And uh, there was these shots of him in the Superman costume. And uh, yeah, never they never got on to making the movie because Nicolas Cage is insane. 
But you know who as, would have played Lois Lane? Tim yeah. Burton and Kevin Smith. Like, those are three of the most loose canon people to be involved yeah. in a project, I can imagine. So, who was going to play Lois Lane, Tom? Well, there's only one person who could play uh, Lois Lane if it was Tim Burton directing. Oh, yeah, Helen McBottom Carter. Carter. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, she'd be awesome. Pop, pop, pop. She'd look like a witch, though, which would be quite cool. It'd be great, especially in the flying Catwoman scene. would My- turn up and look like the like buttoned-up older sister of Lois Lane. <laughs> My brother went to the premiere of a, um, oh, it was a movie or something in London, and um, he was just hanging out, and uh, Tim Burton, Helena Bonham Carter were there, and there's this photo that was in a magazine of Tim Burton, Helena Bonham Carter, and my brother, like. (laughs) Did you know that Superman had a 1966 Tony-nominated musical play produced on Broadway called It's a Bird, It's a Plane? It's Superman. Oh my gosh, that sounds incredible. Really, 66, that's really, the year England won the World Cup. I kind of wonder if mm. there was a little bit of Batman-Superman rivalry going on because that was the same year that they launched the Batman, uh, or the Batman movie came out. So the Batman TV series had been going since 1964. And yeah, then in 66, the Superman musical came out. It just kind of felt like they were trying to shift the kind of perception of the characters because Batman had gone from, yeah, being this grimy sort of pulp detective in the 40s and then through the 50s kind of lost his way and started trying to pick up bits from other successful comics there was a bunch of sci-fi stuff he fought aliens they had bat might and (laughs) was it ace the bat hound amazing loads of random characters and then it came to the 60s and they were like this is not working let's do a reboot and so they went for the kind of fun campy aesthetic that's typified by the 1964 um, Burt, uh, Adam West, Burt Ward series. Yeah. And then in 1966, they had the Batman movie with Adam Ward and Burt West, uh, Adam West and Burt Ward rather. Uh, and the same year, 1966, there was the Superman musical. So it kind of felt like they'd gone from being these like quite serious, like you know, da da da, to being these campy fun. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I haven't seen the Superman musical. It could be a super gritty, realistic look at life for an immigrant in 1960s America. It sounds somehow I in- doubt it. It sounds incredible. I like to say, um, is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's a bird. I was right the first time. <laughs> I love, I love, the, like, I love the Adam West Batman because it's just, it's absolutely bonkers. Like, there's this, there's a one episode where they're like, and I think they're trip in the submarine, and they're like, we can't, oh no, there's missiles coming, there's two missiles coming, and then it goes to you know, air break, and then it comes back, and they're like standing on the shore, and they're like, wow, I can't believe we got out of there, Batman. He's like, yes, and let's have a moment of silence for those two brave dolphins that threw themselves in the way. <laughs> Uh, nothing can beat shark like, spray, right? Bat shark ever. spray. Yeah. There is a Twitter <laughs> account that I highly recommend, which is just called Bat Labels. Amazing. Because as someone's pointed out, in the Bat Cave, which only Batman, Robin, and Alfred have access to, everything is labeled. You would think that the only three people who use this would know what the things are, especially That's when it's funny. like Bat Computer. <laughs> yeah. It's got a big sign in, in front of it that says Bat Computer in big block capitals. And this Twitter account just clicks them and tweets them out. And it's just such a source of joy. Kenny and I went to, I lived in the same hall of residence in Dunedin, and um, the nearest bathroom to my room, um, someone had scratched out the H and had drawn the Bat symbol next to it. It was so great. <laughs> That room, room and those jokes about Bruce Wayne saying, I'm so cold off to my bath. Robin, can you hand me a bathrobe? And Robin's like, what's a robe? <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys know that uh, when they were making a Superman movie and they eventually uh, cast uh, Christopher Reeves, um, Bruce Jenner auditioned for it. Oh. Now Caitlyn Jenner w- yeah, yeah, yeah. Audition- d- didn't get anywhere because... Uh, he at the time was a, uh, a professional athlete who was a who were, uh, notoriously very uh, bad actors, and except Air Bud, obviously. Except, except yeah. Air Bud, of course. But did you know Christopher Reeves was trained to get ready for his role as Superman by Darth Vader, David Prowse? Wow! Isn't that wow. amazing? It's a small world. Yep. And a shout out to um, uh, one of the, the listeners of the show who uh, put a comment on our video the other day when we talked about how David, David Prowse had been banned from Star Wars conventions. He pointed out that he won't ever go to any again because he died last year. So, <laughs> so <laughs> we failed to mention that. So well done. Same with, that, that same with Christopher Reeves. Same, Christopher yeah. Reeves has also been banned from all Supermanic. <laughs> from all equestrian events. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> just, too soon. Yeah. Who is the best Batman? Will Arnett. Will Arnett. Yeah, well on it. That was easy. Next I question. Guess figured it out. <laughs> Did we agree on the best Superman? No, because only, only two of us answered. I think it's Dean Cain, to be quite honest. He's the one I grew up with watching Lois and the Adventures of Lois and Clark. He seemed he, like he's just, ca- he seems quite funny. Um, he is no, also Supergirl's adopted dad. 
in the new CW Supergirl that's just Amazing. wrapped up last year. I love it when things like that happen. Like in a um, uh, recent Superman movie, his dads are played by Kevin Costner and Russell Crowe, who are yeah, both yeah. Robin Hood. There was a Crisis on Infinite Earths where they did a bunch of crossovers between Arrow and The Flash and Supergirl and all the rest of them. And they had... Burt Ward playing an old Dick Grayson and there's so there's this like lightning storm in the sky and he says something like holy crimson clouds of death and he's just some old guy walking his dog but he's in a red jumper with like green trim oh he's Disney bounding as Robin he is Disney bounding as Robin but he's credited as as Dick Grayson the character is Dick Grayson that's amazing well, guys, hey, we are, we're going to have to wrap up, I think. We're running out of time, unfortunately. Um, so let's quickly go back around and just remind everyone our facts. My fact was that the 14th Governor General of New Zealand, David Beatty, who has the same birthday as Superman, died at the ripe old age of 18. My fact was that Superman briefly had the power to cause amnesia by kissing people, but they forgot about that, so maybe he kissed them. <laughs> <laughs> My fact was that Superman was made in action comics and Batman started off in detective comics, which is ACDC. And my fact was that uh, much like Roman generals of yore, Batman has nipples on his chest armor. All right, on the count of three, let's point to the person we think had the best fact of the day. And a one, and a two, and a three. Kenny, you take it out, buddy. Congratulations, oh. well done. Well, I guess um, that means Batman's better than Superman, which is absolute bullshit, I'm out of here. Bullshit. Thank you for listening. Please like, comment, subscribe, share with all your friends. If you have any ideas for future episodes, please write them under me. And we'd love to hear your thoughts on who would win in a fight between Batman and Superman. I'll tell you who would. The goddamn Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Be Nicholas Cage. Bye, everyone.